Hey, good morning, everyone. Today is September the 2nd. Thank God August is over. Days are getting shorter. Nights are getting cooler. That's all good for helping fires behave. Um, we've got some new infrared. Um, it's about 6 a.m. We got infrared that was flown at 3. So we're going to take you on a quick tour of that and uh, talk about what we're seeing. Okay, we're looking south over South Lake Tahoe, Fallen Leaf Lake here on the on the side. We're gonna come in around Myers and look at what's happening with the fire. So all these black lines you can see on the map, these are all bulldozer fire lines. Um, firefighters call the bulldozer the big yellow Pulaski. Pulaski's the tool we use to cut fire line. Um, Really can't do modern day firefighting without bulldozers. Um, as we were talking about before, when this fire first took off and was, um, you know, ran 10 miles um, and then was 15 miles long the next day, you know, within a day or two, we've got 60, 80, 100 miles of fire perimeter. And as we were talking about, you know, even if you have 2,000 firefighters, half of them are off shift at any given time. Um, you just don't have enough firefighters to cut line all the way around here. You know, even the best crews, um, maybe they can cut a mile of fire line in a day um, in really good ground, maybe a mile and a half. So uh, got to have those bulldozers. Um, so you can see the bulldozers have been busy. They push power line corridors here. They push the edge of the fire. Um, when the fire's behaving itself, bulldozers can work right on the edge of the line. We call that going direct where they're actually, you know, pushing dirt, you know, right up against the flames. Anyway, we've got dozer line here along the edge of the neighborhood behind uh, behind the houses. Um, the white line is the fire perimeter from yesterday from um, yesterday morning. So where you see the fire um, perimeter here with no heat, uh, it's shown us that the fire hasn't moved much. We see some dots of heat here. Um, one thing that's worrisome here as you get farther up on Trimmer Peak is just that um, the fire did run quite a bit since yesterday uh, downhill. Um, we've got dozer line up against that. Um, dozers can only go on ground that's so steep and then they have to back off and we have to use hand crews or other uh, resources, you know, bucket drops. But one way or another, we've got to get line around these things, even if you cool them down with a helicopter or um, airplane. Uh, the fire can burn underneath the retardant or um, it can smolder and take off again. So helicopters and bulldozers or helicopters and aircraft, they don't really put the fire out. They just buy us time. But when it comes down to it, we need to dig a ditch all the way around this thing and make sure it's cold, either by hand or with a machine. And on this deeper ground, the machines can't go there. So um, ground like this is tough, and often we have to wait for the fire to come to us um, if it's too dangerous to get crews. So, um, you know, what that means often is, you know, firing off of lines that are not right up against the fire. Uh, so it's difficult, and it's got its own risks, but... Um, that's where we're at looking at Trimmer Peak. So just to give you a little context, here's the um, the airport. Uh, Myers is over here on the side and uh, we're looking to the east here. So quite a bit of heat hung up on there. Um, coming back down to the community, the good news is just that there has been no spread in the community. Um, some data that we had last night that showed heat out here, that was inaccurate. Looking over here at Echo Lake, the fire is backing down. Uh, people have been uh, asking about cabins in Deco Lake and where the fire is in particular. So just to look at close here, um, there's nothing past this. Uh, I don't know if that, is that a boat ramp. Uh, fire has backed down all the way to the lake. There was some active firefighting back in here yesterday on Upper Echo Lake. As we've been looking for, um, we're not seeing spot fires for the most part out into the the pockets of fuel out here. There's a little one there. But for the most part, the granite still uh, seems to be holding up. Okay, we're going to come down here and look... Um, down Christmas Valley from the other direction. Um, same story here. The fire is this is what we call flanking spread, where the fire isn't running at its head, but it's running along its edges. Another thing we talked about yesterday is just that the concern with this 
open fire line here is that right now it's um, it's not really it's flanking when we've got a wind that's blowing from the southwest like this it doesn't it really can't get up and go because it it's running into itself but the concern with this is if it if the wind changes you know if the wind say started to come from the northeast now this becomes a new head on the fire so um, those are of concern the good thing about this fire here is just that it's not in a position where it's threatening to burn back through down here okay looking back to the north um, we're just going to go around the fire now in a clockwise direction so as we said the white line is yesterday's perimeter there's a little bit of spotting and um, some movement up here in the back country and we were talking yesterday about the fire spreading up um, here's Cody Lake up in here and, um, and we talked about the fire spreading slowly out of there it is spreading a bit and this area up here had been secure um, with dozer line for several days um, it looks like we did have a finger of fire that ran out into there we're looking up at the capels prescribed burn here this gap and now over to Kirkwood um, yesterday's perimeter so the fire has continued to kind of spot and spread through the granite now one thing we've got going for us here is we've got this high country um, there's no snow there now but that um, the rim here is a barrier of fire spread uh, sparse fuels it's also a place that with the right visibility aircraft can be really effective here just because 100% um, of the retardant gets on the ground it's not like it gets hung up in trees and that you have shadowing now, shadowing is a term where um, you know if an airplane comes and drops in the lee side of these ridges sometimes the retardant doesn't hit the ground just like if you sprayed a hose you know over your house the back side of your house isn't going to get wet so you know for aircraft to be effective we need nice open ridge lines or and it helps if it's open like this where you know you can get shadowing behind trees also um, so the biggest limitation on our use of the air tankers has been just the smoke. When we do get to use them, they're really effective, especially in the more open ground. So Capels Lake, Kirkwood, no real spread near um, here toward Kirkwood Resort proper. Um, it does continue a little bit, um, you know, it's, it's spotting and spreading slowly, but we haven't had any major runs here. Okay, so to back out in just a little bigger picture, um, Silver Lake, Highway 88, Fire still moving through the granite here towards 88. As we get up here to the junction of 88 and the Mormon Immigrant Trail, um, some of the information was showing spot fires out here the other day. Uh, it's hard to tell if that was just um, you know, bad data or if there's spot fires that got picked up. Probably bad data. Um, you know, these airplanes are flying sometimes up at 40,000 feet, and even just a little bit of wobble on the plane um, can throw off, or you can see heat in the air um, but we do you know this stuff is not 100 percent fail safe so that's why you know the infrared that we're using you've always got to take uh, with a grain of salt and in general you know with uh, firefighting decision making they're looking for multiple sources of information the infrared is a great kind of snapshot of where the fire is um, but they they still want to send people out and patrol these lines you know just because the infrared shows the fire is cold doesn't mean that they're not going to go patrol it Okay, so zooming out here to look at the big picture, um, there's scattered heat along the south edge of the fire, but in general, the south edge of the fire, kind of from about um, Leak Springs Hill to the east, um, has been kind of less of a concern for the last several days. As you can see, there's a lot of dozer line. There was a bit of heat down around um, Sly Park on the backside um, last couple days, and uh, I don't see any of that heat this morning. Yesterday's IR showed some heat um, on this backside of the ridge across the backside of Camp Creek. But um, I do hear that they're repopulating um, in some of these areas, which i uh, happy to hear for all you who uh, get to go home. Uh, all I can say about this edge of the fire is that it had an enormous potential to be a major disaster, and the, um, the firefighting that went on here was, uh, was really incredible. When you just look at, you know, dozer lines right in people's backyards firing off of 
uh, right off of people's backyards. So the fact that we didn't lose more homes in this area is really amazing and testament to huge amount of hard work. All right, coming back around Sly Park side. Uh, sorry about my creaky chair here. Um, not a lot to talk about here. Uh, there has been some spread up here by Whitehall, filling in, uh, you know, back down towards the river. Um, don't have any intel on on the intensity of you know the backing fire. Um, we know that farther up by Car Kybers, uh, the backing fire. There's been some some good fire effects here. Um, so anyway, this is still on the correct side of Highway 50, and we'll keep moving upstream here. Now, as we get up here closer to Kybers, we're looking up the American River Canyon. Um, this is done burning in here, but um, well, when I say done, it's spread down to the line here. Uh, big story on this side of the fire is the spread to the north. Um, you can see yesterday's perimeter in white along here. It's white line. And so there has been significant spread of the fire, but with that prevailing wind, it's mainly carrying up towards the granite. Um, granite is, you know, we call it kind of the big catcher's mitt. So I know the concern is um, keeping it out of Wright's Lake. Uh, I don't see any new dozer line on the map. That doesn't mean it's not out there. Um, you know, the dozer guys are focused on driving their dozers. They're not really focused on mapping. So oftentimes we don't get good mapping of where the dozer lines are until we've actually had people go out and walk them. And one thing that does happen is we, we try to map all the dozer line, not only so we know where it is for fire control, but also because we have to go back out and clean all this stuff up. You know, the dozers make a big mess. And then um, we keep them around after the fire to uh, try to clean up that mess. Anyway, so uh, don't know exactly where the lines are on this, but I know that this has been a, a really high priority. And uh, we'll, we'll keep looking at what happens here. Um, same story here as yesterday. You know, the fire is kind of spotting around up into the granite. Uh, probably not any suppression action that's going to happen on stuff like this just because we've got the granite all around the top. And this is um, the spot we looked at earlier out here. Um, uh, in the granite anyway, back around the fire, um, coming in here is Ralston Lake. Um, uh, so there was a decent amount of fire here at Upper Echo Lake yesterday. In the big picture, uh, we got the Tamarack fire out here. You know, uh, when things were really running and gunning and we didn't know when this fire would stop, you know, fires like this, um, that's a one big black chunk of ground that the fire's not going to spread through. So, um, you know, when, when things are really moving, we're looking at the maps from, you know, 30,000 feet at uh, what's it going to hit? Is it going to hit the alfalfa fields? Is it going to hit the purple, uh, you know, hit the tamarack fire? Is it going to hit the lake? Uh, it's, so you got to think sometimes when these fires are pushing, you know, 100, 200,000 acres. Anyway, um, that's your morning briefing. I wanted to talk just for a second about uh, my background. And um, since you're all watching and checking out, you know, why, why is this guy worth listening to? Um, I've been working in fire since about um, 1995. Came in through the Forest Service working on timber crews in forestry. And uh, we burned a lot. Um, there was a lot of salvage logging going on from trees that had been killed by insects. and uh, So we were marking trees to be cut for thinning. And um, in the winter, we were burning piles that were the size of houses that bulldozers had pushed up after logging. And I, I thought that was great. Um, and that I'd better get a job working in fire. So um, I was going to school for mapping and kind of fell into fire and mapping at the same time. And right then was right when we started taking you know, big old computers and plotters and stuff out to fire camps to make maps for the firefighters. So I kind of just fell in at the right time and um, there's a little overlap there. I, I knew how to weld and keep equipment running. So um, had a niche. We'd build trailers and put plotters in them, took them to forest fires. 
And um, I worked for a big contractor that did prescribed burning and all, all sorts of different firefighting. So um, over the past 20 years, I've been going to fire camps and making maps and um, doing prescribed burning in the winter. And here you go. Um, learned a lot over the years about how these big fires get fought just um, from working in the planning section and from having mentors that um, knew a lot about a lot of ground. You know, So we spent a lot of time in pickup trucks in, in fire world riding around with the old guys and out every window there's some story about you know something that happened there a fire they were on a fatality uh, fuels projects they did you know um i've always pretty much worked for guys that came out of the federal um you know forestry programs you know forest service and uh, so those guys like to talk about forestry and fire and um, so over the years just kind of i've gravitated towards towards the forestry side of it and um now we're doing YouTube. So, um, you know, we started to look out just cause I feel like, you know, I think the reason a lot of you guys are thirsty for honest coverage is that all you want to see on the news is people showing the biggest flames, you know, like I've been on fires that have been out for four days and the media is still showing huge pictures of flames and saying, well, the fire is only 50% contained. It's like, no, it's out, man. We can't even find a smoke. So, um, I think we're all sick of that kind of, um, hysterical, fear-based approach to what's going on with wildfire. We've got to get in better terms with wildfire, obviously, because it's, uh, you know, it's eating our lunch. So the lookout is all about, you know, telling these new fire stories. Um, how do we get to be in such bad relation with fire? What's the way forward? How, how do we adapt our firefighting? You know, as we're seeing on these, these fires, you know, when the fire wants to move, it is. It doesn't matter how many air tankers or bulldozers we have. And uh, we've got to adjust. We've got to kind of admit failure of our old systems to deal with these big fires and talk about how we're going to manage them now because we can't just keep um, pretending that we can put them out. You know, it's obvious that some of these big fires, we're not going to put them out till it rains. And um, we don't need to beat up firefighters um, on using tactics that don't work anymore. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about on the lookout. You know, I'm going to be bringing in uh, people I've worked with, you know, I've worked with a lot of people over the last 20 years who um, are the best uh, landscape scale firefighters we've got. And so um, we're kind of planning out a schedule of how we can get those folks on the lookout, um, either doing video or, or podcasts. And let's just talk about where we're at with fire, um, what we know about what works, what's not working now, um, how we're going to do more prescribed burning. And, um, and you know, try to get some people together to just talk about a vision for how we can move forward in better relation with fire. So we appreciate your support. Um, things are a little bit crazy. Um, you know, we've only been running this site not even quite a month and um, getting a lot of huge amount of interest. So um, we're going to scale it up. Um, I'm, I'm going to take a couple of days off here. Um, I'll be working from the road, but um, got to stay human. Uh, so we appreciate your support. Stick with us. Um, it's just my wife and I right now and a, a guy helping out with copy edits. So um, we'll get there. But we appreciate your support and um, stick around and we'll keep talking about fire.